Today we'll try Rhino Inside, which is one of the new features for Rhino 7. However, this is still developing stage and is still called work in progress. I'll share the link below here so you can download and read about this ongoing McNeil Associates project. However, once again, this is still work in progress, so I do not recommend it's not suitable for any live or commercial project. As the majority of AEC industry relies heavily on digital tools these days for their accuracy or collaborative working and time efficient delivery, this interoperability issues between tools have been a big challenge for this industry. Hence in Rhino, plugins like Jurabbit, Geometry Gym, Hummingbird and others have been there for us to translate native Grasshopper and Rhino geometry to Revit. Knowing that Grasshopper Rhino will do heavy lifting for early design stage work and Revit covers the diligent delivery documentation, this particular development excites the AEC beam coordinators and computational design specialists and contractors too for huge cost saving exercise. In this particular tutorial, uh, we'll cover and, and make twist twin towers from last tutorial, which you should address fundamentals and what you need to know for this tool. So let's take a look. Okay, first of all, to use Rhino inside, you'd have to have your Revit open. This is slightly unusual process to what we used to do in the past, but AO, this is now built in Revit, which is really brilliant. So I'll show you where to find this new Rhino in Revit. So go to add-ins and you'll find Rhino icon right up there. Please go ahead and click that and you'll see a bunch of different icons up here. Start from Rhino, you'll have a help in here and you'll see some sample file and the other things that you can find which is quite useful. And there's import, so you can import different, you know, the um, units and different files. And previews, you'll be able to preview all this in the 3D view and Python, you can run separate Python scripts and you can launch Grasshopper straight away in, in Revit. Today, to build the uh, Twist Twin Towers, you need to go through Rhino. I'm gonna run Grasshopper in Rhino. Um, like we did previously, uh, we'll need a base geometry. I'm gonna run this tutorial rather quick because I covered this exact same thing in the previous tutorial. So please do refer to my previous tutorial if you wanna go through this more thoroughly. Um, okay, this is worthwhile touching base as well. So if you see um, here, you, you will get additional uh, Revit components and under params and you'll get this Revit primitives. And also if you go Revit, you'll have a bunch of tools here that you can use. Um, so without further ado, let me just go ahead and build this floor plate that we know L shape is quite optimal for this twist twin tower. And I'm not particularly interested in the size of this now. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a pram. Let's run straight in so you can see this. Go ahead, select that, and you need a move to move that base geometry, and you need to move that Z direction. And that requires a series, and we know floor to ceiling height should be somewhere around four, and the count defines the number of stories that you want to have in your tower. So I'm going to go ahead and use 20. So next you will have to, let me just drag it down so you have a bit of space. Next you will have to rotate this. Go ahead and click rotate and connect this to rotate geometry. And you'll have to rotate this using series and you change the angle to degree. Connect that to angle. And you know how many times you have to rotate, so count, just borrow one from the number of story. And that really defines the degree now to steps. So if I use one to 10, so you'll be able to control the degree of rotation. So if I hide this, you'll clearly see the tower is, is rotated, which isn't quite visible. If I increase it, you'll notice immediately that the tower is being twisted. So I'll just go down and make it a bit easy, which is six, visible enough, and that's not too extreme. Um, 
Next, we will have to create a skin, uh, which we'll use loft and connect the geometry to curves. Next, we'll have to do, we'll have to break these all in pieces. So use the whole thing, deconstruct, B wrap. Make sure you click the right thing. What we are interested in to get is these faces. And we we know what we need to use now, mesh surfaces. So we gonna click the faces to surface. I'm gonna hide this too to make it less heavy. So uh, for you, uh, for you count, I'm gonna quick connect that to uh, this. So now we have rather quite widely spreaded floor plate and also V count is six. If you wanna make this division bang on the floor where the floor plates are, um, then you'll have to use this uh, number of story that if you connect that to you count and you control the expression which is minus one then you will notice that this is now perfectly aligned with the uh, floor plate which is helpful uh, next i'm gonna rotate this 180 degrees to make the twist another copy twin tower and angle should be 180 and that gets connected there uh, we have to define the degree as well right so that's now been completed uh, what i'm going to do next is that i'm going to group these so that you will visibly see what these are so when we um, when we move this geometry to revit you will immediately see where to find these components so I'm going to copy this rather convenient rotate tool over here to define the floor plate uh, for twin twist tower. So that's floor plate. So select these all and give a name floor. And okay, so that's all good. Um, if you come back to Revit for a second. If you see 3D, please try recompute. That uh, so you will see this is currently cropped. So if I uncrop this to find this here, if you uncrop this, you'll see the geometry has been translated now in Revit, right? So you can either bake this, right? Using these uh, pre-made uh, component tools, family component, uh, drop down menu and you can bake it uh, it will allow you to bake it once you once you click the, um, the actual grass of component so if I go back here if I click that and if you come back here and compute and it will allow you to bake it so that that way you can have them baked in the Revit however we want to go through the right step-by-step -step procedure so if you go here if you come here you'll find a bunch of tools uh, is, which is quite similar to GRevit. Um, the, the difference is here, I'll probably go take this into another tutorial to explain uh, what's, what are the differences from previous other you know, the components or the plugins to this Rhino inside. But let's just demonstrate um, what you need to do to make it work. Okay, so we know that this mesh geometry has to be now exploded, which I half finished so if I mesh explode mesh explode and if I explode that and that gives you the vertices so if you'll have to deconstruct this further deconstruct mesh you'll need to borrow that to complete this right so connect vertices to points for type if you right click it will let you select what sort of types you want to select right so if you go here you need to go all the way down to generic so it will be under g and i'll use family one which is uh, the adaptive component that we created for the previous uh, twist twin towers so you can use this exact copy in this particular exercise too so for those one who haven't actually uh, watched the previous tutorial i'll share the link below so that you can follow how to create adaptive components 
for, for this tutorial, I'm not going to repeat this process again. So that has calculated all, uh, computed all. Now it has been built the uh, the frames around the around the skin. If you go back to Revit, you see that immediately that has been translated to Revit 3D modeling space, which is very very um, quick and very intuitive. Um, I'm going to repeat this process again for the other, you know, the tower here. So you just need to copy, simply copy these two and then paste and connect that to there. That's ready to be plugged in. Um, I haven't tried this yet, but you may be able to connect these two together, but it may confuse the, uh, the components. So I'm going to use it separately. And for types, we're going to do the same process again. Uh, you can do this or there is another one uh, let's try this other component so if you type click type so it will it will let you select this type component and in this particular component you can also select exactly what we did for the other one so you go under model categories and go all the way down to generic models and type family so this particular node has got that particular family selected within it so if you connect that to type so this is now done the computing the the other frame so here you go you see the frames have been built in other tower so if you go back again uh, you will see that whole thing has been completely translated very quickly all right so next thing is that we need to build the floor plates so these are ready here let me just drag it all the, all the way across. Uh, what we need to do is that we have to add the floor. Before we adding the floor, we need to define the um, define the level. So go to add level. So we'll, we know this. I'll probably have to go through this quite quickly. So I'm going to drag it all the way up close to the first a few nodes here where we started the whole twisting tower scripting. So quick. Uh, a quick panel, so type panel and define the level. Uh, so starting with level one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to use the level text, which is going to be the string. And we have to repeat this string number of times. So how many times we know exactly how many times it needs to be repeated, which is the number of floor, number of floor. And this, the second thing you need to do, we have to concave this all up. So that has to be added to fragment. We need a new series. And that count has to connect to 20 again. And we know this uh, this number will increase by 1. So if you connect it there, it will start from 0 all the way up to 19. If you want to start the floor level starting from 1, then you can obviously do this here by adding 1 to start. So it depends on your preference, but I'm going to do this in this way. So connect it there and you have this all complete. So that's the name defined and we need to define the numbers as well. So elevation, we know this will be the elevation. So that's the floor height. And we know that has to be added to name. And if, next thing we have to do, we have to graph these two and the craft name okay dogs now we have created levels in revit so let's take a look what is done so start from level one all the way up to level 20. so if you go to here modern space that uh, you can see the level appearing in the 3d view too so next thing so now we have defined the level create the level in revit I'm going to group this so we know where to visit to find the level. So I'm going to type level. So come back to floor. So let's, so under the build tool, you can find add floor. So go ahead, click this boundary to boundary here. And you can define the type. So obviously you can select it from here. Go all the way down to floor. There you go. So there are three 
types of floors in the Revit model currently. So I'm going to click concept 300. Okay, so okay, let's try this here. So if you connect this geometry, other geometry to boundary, it should technically work. It did work. So now we got the floor plates built in Rhino as well as yes, Revit. Okay, so this is how you do a twist twin towers in Revit as well as Rhino. You can either bake all of these in in Rhino modeling space, and you can obviously run uh, twin motions or Enscape or V-Ray to render this all very nicely, or you, you choose to do this all in uh, all in Revit. Obviously, these all have got those uh, respective uh, rendering tools as well. So depends on what, what you want to do, uh, you can take it from there. All right, so I hope you enjoyed it. And if you do have any queries, please leave your questions in the, in the comments and I will try to answer that as soon as I can. Thank you for watching.